from home to the asylum. Never alone in the asylum. <laughs> Anarchy ruled. It was wild. But through it all, you never smiled. Joke's on you. I'm in your head, so look who's through it all. Out. You never <laughs> smiled. Joke's on you. I killed your girl. So pretty. That was the night you let me die. But when I looked you in the eye, that's when I knew we'd be together. Look who's laughing now. I'm stuck in your head and I'm laughing. Good morning, Jody. It's a late evening for me, but uh happy to have you. Thank you for being so prompt uh, for what it was an unannounced stream. Uh, yeah, uh, this is my first time streaming in like two weeks. I think I, and the time I streamed like two weeks ago was my first time in a few weeks. So I'm, I have a bad track record, but this is the start of a new era. What era is that? I'm 29. Had my birthday on Saturday and uh, yeah, kind of kickstarting it. I had like a little feeble attempt uh, at the start of the year to get this going. Only streamed like 10 or so times in two or so months. But here we go. 29 years old. I've got one year to make it work. Uh, especially because I've got six months worth of rent paid up before I need to get a job or something. Uh, favorite local boast. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you just so much for being loyal and I guess seeing notifications that I'm live and wanting to click it. Really appreciate it. And thank you for the birthday wishes. Um, yeah, today, basically, a, a thing that I'm trying to get over is that I keep not so much dreading streaming, but I'm like, I want to make it a big deal of it. It's like, okay, I really want to be in the right mindset for it. So I build it up in my mind to do like a four or five hour stream. And then I keep putting it off like, oh, that's, I don't know if I have enough fun stuff to fill four or five hours. Uh, and then I end up just not streaming. So Rosie even suggested today, it's like, you keep talking about this and not doing it. Why don't you just do like one hour of streaming and just get back into the swing of things? And so that's kind of my plan for today. You, uh, I think I put the title as building a code replay component and maybe some Elden Ring because I'm also wanting to start actually playing some video games as part of this streaming. So I'm going to be... Um, I just realized I'm playing two songs at the same time. <laughs> there we go. That was probably fucking cacophony for a little bit there. Yeah, so I'm going to be playing a bit of video games once I get bored of um, all the programming. And I think that's probably going to be a fun way to... Or fun for me, at least. Might break things up for you guys. Just to be able to be like, okay, this is a lot of dense programming. And generally, at the end of a stream, I'm like, my mind is fried. And so I'm like, I just need to run away from this. But I think it'll be a lot better if when my mind gets fried, I'm able to be like, I need to run away from programming and turn on the Steam Deck and play some Elden Ring or whatever game I'm playing at the time. So that's where I'm going with this. Hopefully, um, we'll, we'll see how it goes today. I've got just like one, in theory, small thing to work on um, for the React stuff that should hopefully not take too long. And if we start to get bogged down in specifics, I'll probably call it there and then switch over to video games and see how we go. Yeah, game and stream. Um, I think we, I, I talked about that on streams before. Uh, maybe even you asked about it, Cody, or I know other people have um, asked like, oh, would I ever see myself playing games? Or if I do, do see myself, what kind of things would I play? And I think I kept answering that I, I, I would like to do it someday, but I feel wrong doing it on this account. That like, oh, it's, it's the local boast account. It's about programming. I don't want to taint it. Uh, so I, maybe I'll do it on my other account, but I'm not set up for that and it would be awkward. And like, I had that in my mind for ages. And then I just randomly saw on YouTube, there's this streamer, I'm trying to think of his name. I think it's like Piracy Software or Pirate Software or something like that. I don't know much about him, but I know he's pretty massive as a Twitch streamer, like a programming Twitch streamer. I haven't really actually watched any of his stuff, but he just popped up on my YouTube as playing Inscription. 
one of my favorite video games. It's just, okay, this is nothing to do with programming, but it's on his main channel where a lot of people are subscribed for programming stuff. And it kind of flipped a switch in my mind of, I could just do that as well. Like, especially if I'm doing it on a stream where I'm also doing some programming and it's like the sort of one show after hours where it's like, okay, we're, the main stream is programming, but we're, we're going to do a little bit of gaming here and there and hopefully not uh, have too many, too much like, oh, people subscribe for one thing and you're giving them another. I think, I think it'll be, it'll be fine and make it a lot easier for me. Um, so yeah, that's what we're going to try today. And without any further ado, I'm just going to queue up some music. Cool. So what I want to work on, I think it was the thing we had touched on the last day. I tried, um, actually, I think I commented out the code. I'll put it back in now. Just see what it was we were building the last day. Um, it was, we were working on a code replay component. So using the animated text as well as um, the code component that I made to do this thing. Um, so having it like, I was struggling just with styling and layout of it, but the idea of having some for syntax highlighted code that automatically highlights in. And this already looks a lot better than it did the last day because the last day I was struggling with two things. I was struggling to get fonts working and I hadn't yet figured out how to customize the theme of the code input. And so I've since done a lot of work on that uh, code use syntax highlighting hook. So I've made it able to load in custom fonts or not, not custom fonts, custom uh, themes. So the color schemes and stuff. And this color scheme that's being used here is actually uh, one that I've customized using my brand colors. So it, it's, it's kind of like offshoots of the brand colors. So it matches some of what's on the website. But yeah, you've got your the purples, the blues, the greens and the reds. All that pretty much line up with my branding um and it also adapts to light mode dark mode oh so yeah I'm, I'm way happier with how that looks now um the reason i commented it out is that it does not belong on this home page i literally just chucked it in here because i didn't have a better place for it um but yeah i think one of the things that i was struggling with the last day was deciding what to even do with it where i wanted it to go so as a refresher since it's been two weeks uh, since I last talked about this. For a refresher, I have both my website as just like a showcase of my you know personal portfolio and uh, like as a separate thing from the React library I'm working on. And then I've got the React library as like a standalone thing that I hope other people use. And so, oh, what is it? Oh shoot, I see the colors, nice attention to detail. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, it's like it the colors are a bit vague where like you can see that this purple doesn't match this purple down here so there's like a kind of a spectrum of key codes that i can use for each um each color but yeah it's more or less on brand um so yeah what i was struggling the last day was that code component i wasn't sure if that should exist in my library as something that all people can use or a thing on my website because, and, and I had it in the library thinking, oh yeah, a load of people will want that. I'll stick it in the local bus library. But then it just became way too bespoke of like, how do I want the buttons to look? Wait, why am I importing buttons? This isn't a UI library. I, and I wanted to use Mantine, but I didn't want the library to have any dependencies. So I was just all back and forth with it like that. And I ended up just deleting the code that I had written at the end of the stream. I think I was like, I'd spent ages writing it out. And I was like, no delete all this and that's because it was too ad hoc too one-off use case to be in the library so it's i i've decided what to do with it now it's going to exist as an app on the website that is a showcase for other things in the library similar to how um i think i tried to show this off before and i realized the link was broken but so there's a thing that I built, one of the first things I built on stream that I really need to go back to, yeah, and it's still broken. Um, there's like an Etch-a-Sketch component that I built using things from the library. Like the there's a hook in the library that lets you read Twitch chat messages. And so on the website, there's an app that plays Etch-a-Sketch based on Twitch chat messages. 
So that, but that's something that shouldn't be in the library because I don't want other people's websites to have that Etch-a-Sketch component. I want that to exist on the website as a fun use case of what you can do with the hook that's in the library, if that makes sense. So um, yeah, I need to I need to make this Etch-a-Sketch thing actually usable so that I can show that off and make a note of that. But yeah, um, similar to similar to that, I want a standalone app on the website that other people can use, but mainly that I can use because I have the selfish desire for it in that I need it for video production. Because I have three YouTube videos filmed and somewhat edited, but one of the things with them is that I need a load of, um, I want to overlay a load of code samples and be able to, you know, basically going through it like a tutorial of like I built this hook for this reason I wrote this line but then I needed this hook so that's why I have this and so I, I want a nice way to animate in the things that I'm talking about with the code and so that's why I have a desire right now to build a thing on my website that can give me a thing that I can screen record and just stick into a video of like nicely animating code samples um yeah so gonna dive right into it I've delayed long enough um I've also got quickly mention also got a completely new um studio set up in that I'm no longer in the living room I'm now in the bedroom which might sound like a downgrade but it's such an upgrade for me because one of the reasons that I struggled to do streams or you know go from not streaming to decide you know what I'm gonna start filming now is just the fact that I was in the living room with the dog and the cat and my girlfriend coming in and out and it really felt like I was you know I own the living room right now you're not allowed to come in and so I felt bad about it um also felt probably a bit more on edge so being in here I feel more like I'm in my my little office so yeah hopefully this is the start of way more consistent streaming and uh, actually getting some work done some something of a nine to five but on my own hours that's the hope. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'm going to quickly try to fix that Etch-a-Sketch thing and figure out why that isn't uh, linking up. Because I would love to um, show that off and also get back into it. Because that's something I, I built a dedicated what I'm working on page on my website and it's never had any content because it's all such a work in progress. The work in progress page is itself a work in progress. Um, so I need to fill that out at some point. But yeah, that's that's something where I would love to have these things that I've like started working on, like the Etch-a-Sketch component, but that I haven't necessarily productized, that I haven't shipped. You know, I want a, like a little like post-it note of just like, there's a thing here. Here's a screenshot of it if you're interested. I need to get back to that. Sort of as a reminder to anyone interested, but mainly to me so that I don't forget about all this work that I've done on these potentially really interesting things. Um, so I think it's just that I have not added it to my router. That would make sense. So path, paths dot chat sketch element. Yeah, um, I've already started horrendously mistyping because of the the new setup and not being particularly used to um using this keyboard and that's something that i was thinking of doing with for another fun stream because i haven't done like a fun stream in a while uh one of the things i did a while back i think you were there for it cody where like every every five minutes or so i removed a key from my keyboard Ooh, as a little punishment, and it was horrendous. Need to turn that into a YouTube video. I think that'd be fun. Um, but I was thinking, I don't know how fun it would necessarily be to watch, but something I want to do as sort of a punishment is that when I'm programming, say I'm I'm typing along and I just mistype. It's like, oh, fuck, I didn't mean K, I meant C. That it's like, okay, I have messed up using my keyboard and to train myself to get better with using my keyboard, I need to take, take a speed test. So like every, like... 30 seconds I was like I go go have to take a 30 second speed test until okay just sort of condition myself to stop typoing but also hopefully be like a shit show to watch I think that'd be fun 
the work in progress page is a work in progress itself. Yeah, it's 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 art. It's a true representation of who I am and who, what the website is. Just that that wasn't me showing off clicking this button. It was like I was looking at the purple, the empty purple page, and I, I feel like an empty white page is less. Um, although, although that's too strong a background. Back to purple it is. There we go. Um, yeah, so let's see if this Etch-a-Sketch page actually works now that I've linked it. Come on. Uh, still not today. Still 404. Live utils. Live utils. Do I not actually have that element? That'd be why. There we go. Here's the Etch-a-Sketch component. Yeah, I don't know if... Um, oh god, it's not... What am I doing? This is supposed to be inside of the... Oh, there it is. Okay, so it was in the router, and I had it outside of the wrapped route, because I don't want the page layout. That's what's going on. So it was simply that my paths were broken. Um, so I'll undo that. And then it was the link to the page that's messed up, I believe. Live utils. Uh, live utils page. Bear with me. Link to paths. So etch a sketch. Do I need to prefix it so that it isn't absolutely or like relatively positioned? I think that might be a thing. Really getting bogged down in specifics here. The lady and I are currently visiting my parents and the service is rough. Be right back. Yeah, no worries. I'll be here. Did I break everything? <laughs> I have no idea. Hopefully it's uh, just a casual family visit and nothing nothing too intense. Although even just casual family visits for me are intense. Just struggling to be around people in other people's homes. Or I think I mentioned that the last time I streamed was because... Or the last time I streamed, I mentioned that I hadn't streamed in like two or three weeks because I was so sick after having my father-in-law stay over. Or I say father-in-law, my girlfriend's father, stay with us for a week. And just him being there made me, I think, really sick. Just like, I couldn't cope. My immune system shut down with the, the mental, the, the social stress of having him there for a week. Just put me out of commission for a further two weeks after that. Okay, so... Something weird's going on with my router that I don't really understand. So prepending this with a forward slash is breaking everything, so I don't want that. And the problem is that if I'm on the live utils page, which is here, and then I follow a link to etch a sketch component, it breaks. So do I have to like prefix this with a slash? That seems wrong. So that worked. Um, that's still not working though. Oh, is it? No. No, because that's a child of the root. Unwrapped root is apps. That makes sense. Okay. A chat sketch should be apps slash sketch. So that takes me to apps slash sketch, which still is not working. This is supposed to be just a tiny little coding adventure for this. And it will be. 
I, I'm going to fix this in the next 20 seconds. Just watch. Need louder music. Not amped enough. So. The unwrapped root. Apps. Should that be slash apps? Is this anything? Okay. So it recognizes that root. Did that need a forward slash? This is just, I, I'm aware, this is just absolute basic front end development stuff, uh, figuring out how routing works that I absolutely should know. Um, so the etch a sketch component is that apps slash sketch. And when I go there, it says not today, which is my 404 page. And in my router, I've got, ooh, okay. So this doesn't need to be prepended with apps. There it is. I'm silly. Okay, so child roots are relative to the parent. Um, so do I still need this thing? Because that seems wrong. What happens if I get rid of this? Uh, down there. So this, yeah, that's still trying to take me to the relative path. Uh, React router link absolute. Yeah, so it's saying I need to redirect to slash orders instead of orders. Which is kind of a pain. Is there a nice way to do that? Any prop to make it automatically prepend that rather than always interpolating in a slash? Uh, that seems kind of dumb. But if it's what I gotta do, it's what I gotta do. Like there's certainly a, a better way that I'm missing. Uh, what am I doing? Cool. Either way, we've got a way. To, God damn it! Still not working. Uh, okay, I'm done. So I don't want to prepend this. I want to do this. Paths slash apps. Uh, what are we calling it? Unwrapped root. Cool. Okay, so that's working. The reason I want to get this working is that I want to be able to stick a similar thing in here. It probably doesn't make sense for it to be like under live slash utils anyway. Um, it should probably be like a an apps page because maybe if like I had hundreds of apps and needed to categorize them eventually, maybe it would make sense to have some of them be under the live utils page and some of them be under the static utils or games or whatever. Um, but I think I could just have like an apps page. Uh, I'll figure out down the line how nicely to do that because I think I want a wrapped version of it where like we've got this page the header and it's like more of like a blog format and then you actually click into it and it's like no I want like a standalone thing with no padding around it something that I could like iframe into um an OBS stream or something which is kind of my idea with this etch a sketch component is that it would be something that you might like have that as a you know a uh, a card on your stream you know the kind of um this kind of thing so like if i'm going off luna is distracting me i could have the etch a sketch component be there interactable with chat so yeah that's why i've got this like unwrapped version of it so it doesn't make sense for 
my new thing to go in here, but I'm just going to stick it in here anyway. Um, so I'm going to... Uh, what am I doing? Head, no. Stack. And... This in there. And this is just going to be the ugliest layout. Just a linear... Like a vertical list of things that'll take me where I need to go and then I'll figure out how the page layout should be after. So for now, etch a sketch. Um what do we what do we actually call this? Code playback? Replay? Replay sounds interesting. I'm gonna call it uh I'll call it code replay. No, I'll, I'll just call it replay because I might down the line choose to have it be plain text as well. Uh, replay. Is this going to go to... Uh, replay. Okay. Why do I have semicolons in there? No idea when that happened. Cool. Now we have a replay root that is not configured. So I'll stick that in. Where do I have this? Do I have this in a... Oh God, that's a really nested folder. That's gross. I should probably just have like a top level components, which I do. I'm just going to make a, an apps folder and configure, move etch at sketch in there down the line. I also, every time I go to say etch, a, etch chat sketch, I go back and forth between just saying etch a sketch and saying etch chat sketch because my pun has only a little bit seeped into my mind. Um, do you know what? I'm going to do one cheeky little thing that I forgot to enable because I am on a roll. I'm on a streak and that streak is I have never streamed, believe it or not. I've streamed like 10 times and I have not once streamed and not gotten at least one follower. And I am deathly afraid of that ending. I need that streak to continue. And so what I'm going to do is something a little cheeky. And uh, I had this on the last day. Why is that invisible? Oh, shit. Uh, I need to figure that out. It's because that's something I, I forgot to announce. I, a load of my integrations are broken. That's what I forgot to announce. Because my Twitch username is different. The whole time I've been streaming, I've been operating under localboast1 because some prick claimed the username localboast. And that prick was me, I think. I think six months ago, I was clearly uh, messing around with usernames, being like, I, I got to hold on to this. Oh, and then I realized I held on to it on the wrong account because I have two accounts. So I held on to it on the wrong account. It was like, oh shit, no, that's the one that I should have called Connor Kelleher. So I renamed it to that. And then realized I've just used the username local boast and now it can't be used by anyone else for six months. So that's why the entire time I've been streaming for the last two months, I've been using the username local boast one and I just got it back. It's local boast now. So I've rebranded. Um, but that does mean that everywhere that I'm logged in, any uh, little, little widgets and uh, integrations that I've got that think I'm called local boast one are now broken. Um, so I, I had a follower goal set, um, with a little overlay and that is now broken. So let's see. Get some more, get some more fun music going. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Bear with me. Hang on. Uh...
Ja, als het echt goed is. I don't know how to change the goal. It's defaulting to 20, and I don't think I can change that. So that's what we got. Uh, is it gonna work? There it is. Okay, just being a little cheeky. Just sticking that in there. In case anyone jumps in and was like, oh wow, he's so close to his goal. I'll help him with that. Okay, back to coding. Because, yeah, I don't think this should take long to get working. Now that I've figured out that mindfuck of a rooting problem, this should be nice and quick to get working. And then we can play some Elden Ring. Which will be the second time I've ever played games on stream. First time being like three years ago when I was just figuring out how live streaming was working. And I just wanted an excuse to test OBS. And I think I played Skyrim, and I was very quiet. I don't think anyone watched. Rightly so. I think it was really boring. Okay. So we've got our replay components. No, we don't. We've got our root set up for replay. So now it just needs to do some lovely laying out of files. Yeah, the, the rate at which I mistype just really basic stuff. Like, I think as soon as I need to type some curly brackets, it screws me up. Because um, I, I, I was doing monkey type, which I love monkey type. I had only just found it because it basically allows you to um, not have to do any of the awkward special characters in a speed typing test. It's all lowercase and it's just... A to Z characters, um, like regular words with those characters. And so it's purely just a test of how quickly can you move your fingers and none of the fucking around with like holding shift and pressing special characters. Um, and I, I was doing really well with that. But now that I'm back to this, I'm instantly screwing up like one out of every five characters. So I think having that little code challenge of, uh, yeah, if I need to go do a speed typing test every time I mistype will be a shit show, but I really need it. Um, so that's good. And I need const replay. The fact that there's a mic like between my eyes and the keyboard really doesn't help. I wonder, is there a way if I hold it like there? That might do, that might be good. Because now I can actually uh, see the keys that I'm typing. Uh, but I know I shouldn't have to. Like I, I can more or less touch type. Okay, so this replay component is just gonna be using, actually I made a code bubble component the other day. But I think that was mostly around the stylizing the outside of it. I think for the most part, I can just um, steal this, just have it be a code component with a color scheme inferred from Mantine. And this is not going to be coming from props. This is going to be something that we will store ourselves. And we need to figure out the logic for how we're going to store all this text. Because it's going to be user inputted, and we're also going to want to be able to persist that in local storage. Which is making me think I'm really overdue coming up with a hook for accessing local storage. Because things like the, the Etch-a-Sketch component, anytime someone draws a line in there, someone on chat suggested, okay, why don't I persist that into local storage so if the page refreshes or the connection drops that the drawing isn't gone so that's something that i think i had to manually you know add the hooks to be like whenever x changes write it into storage and then load the default value from local storage and it was all asynchronous and stuff and so every time anytime i'm adding an app like this i'm gonna want that level of local storage uh, persistence so i really should add a, a hook for that it's also the kind of thing that I think I just want my library to have. 
So I'm going to be, I'm going to optimize this a little bit because I've updated my library so that uh, you can actually import from the nested roots. So instead of up, up importing use updated text from the top level uh, index file, like it was doing by default, I can go a bit more optimized with it and import it from the hooks root or specifically the, the relevant folder that uh, exports the individual uh, file, you know, use update, use animated text, import it directly from the source. Um, it's not from the source, it's from the, the build folder, but it's got the same structure as the source folder. Uh, hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's complaining because we don't have the string set up. And honestly, I haven't thought too hard about how we're going to set that up. So we'll, we'll figure that out together. And this is just going to be imported from Mantine. It's going to be imported from Constance. Um, this is also coming. I was hoping that it would give me a nicer import. Like a, a refined one, the way like this is diving into hooks slash animated text. I thought there might be a way to dive, you know, automatically import from a more nested version of it. There might be a way to configure it to do that, to like have my package file that's in the build automatically root to the nested folders. I have no idea. Uh, I'm figuring a lot of this out as I go. And I spent a few days last week just optimizing the builds and including TypeScript files with the built JavaScript and all that and making sure the folder structure is nice such that I can, you know, as an external user who's added Localbus as a dependency that I can, you know, uh, alt click onto this and see all the TypeScript stuff for it and see all the, the prop structure and all this stuff that you'd expect from a library that you're using. And yeah, just getting that figured out for the first time was a bit of a mindfuck. Um, so why does it not like code? Because that also needs uh, the text. Okay, so he's at least not complaining now. But we still need to figure out what text to actually put in there. So here's where we start thinking about the, the component structure of this. So I think I described this a previous time on a previous stream. So new, new desk setup, a bit more minimal. Don't no longer have the, the drawing tablet because Rosie took that back. It is hers after all. Um, but so we've just got our little, our little um, to-do pad here, our little plan section, which entails entirely just coding the playback component and playing Elden Ring. Don't think I'm gonna forget to do that. But yeah, so what I am thinking with this component is that it's basically going to be text input. I'm going to see about, ooh, I want to see about making the code component editable. That could be fun. It might be way too difficult though. So if the code component can be editable, that's the first thing to find out. Then it's literally just going to be um, like a text area that is pre-formatted uh, so it's just going to be, you get load up the app and it'll be a box that you can type in. You can, you know, paste your shit in and I guess there'll be a button to like persist a state. So like that'll be page one. Um, does that make sense? Rather than persist it, I think I could just do, have there be pages down here by default. So you go to the component, if there's nothing there, then you're on page one. And right next to it, there'll just be a button that says, you know, add more pages. And, and then whatever is in this guy will just be dependent on what page you're on. And so the reason I'm talking about this idea of pages at all is uh, I want to be able to animate between these things, but in a controlled way, such that like I click onto page one and it writes out the bare bones of the code and then like I talk and talk say blah 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 I'm gonna add uh, a new line on line five at that point I would click onto page two and it would animate in this new line that I'm talking about so almost basically like a slideshow like a powerpoint presentation that idea of having these uh this page structure 
And that's just going to be, this text area is just going to be like our canvas that represents whatever belongs to that page. And so these pages, I'm going to need a way to delete them as well. Sounds good. I guess there'll be nuance when it comes to implementing it in terms of like what the default value for each of these is. As in, if you're on page one and you add a new page, it should probably carry over everything from page one. And we probably want to be able to reorder the pages down the line if if I come to really like this component and use it a lot. That's something that should be should be interesting to play with. First, the first thing though that I need to figure out is can the code component be editable? So for that, I'm gonna switch over to Storybook. If it works. Okay, because this we're gonna be building this into the library, the core local local boast library. Um, so this storybook has been the main thing I've been working on the last couple of weeks. I haven't just taken a load of time off. Uh, I have been working, but it's been on really boring shit in the form of automatically generating readmes and stories. So all this stuff, all this like description of the code component, linking to the source code, linking to the hook based solution, uh, having pre-formatted uh, syntax highlighting uh, demo code like this, and then an actual running demo, all of that is generated. None of this is like hard coded in, and it's all generated from a config JSON file. And so it's in theory gonna make it a lot easier to write these stories and maintain them in that each one of these uh, components and hooks, their storybook page is gonna be automatically generated from some minimal configs such that, you know, if I want to make a change in like, oh, I want to change how I link this or like change the icon. Instead of having to change it in 50 places, I can change it in the one template and it automatically gets applied everywhere. And that also will allow for things like, uh, I keep getting sidetracked here, I know. Um, but that also applies to the readmes on uh, GitHub. And I think I pushed it up here. Yeah, so you can see the readme here. This is also automatically generated by that same uh, that same script that's looking at all the, the, the config files. And you can see there's a contents, a table of contents that says what's in the library. And this table of contents that currently has very little to it because very few of the things in the library actually have that config file, um, but it's, any, any page that does have the config file, it's created a readme for it. That's basically the same as what's in the storybook page, but a bit more specific to knowing that you're on GitHub. And it allows each index. So like if you're on the components page or the top level page, it allows that to have a table of contents that shows everything that's in there. And it's all automated such that if I add a new hook, I don't have to write uh, a bunch of stories for it and make, down the line when I add testing I won't have to do all the grunt work of setting up a testing suite for it and then update all the index readmes every time and then I realize after I've done a hundred readmes that I had a typo in this section and now I need to update all of them. Now it'll, it's all driven by an automatic config and so this table of contents will automatically be updated every time I just run the build script and I'm really happy with it still has a bit to do in that this top level storybook readme uh, is not sorted. It should be easy enough, but I just haven't gotten to it. Yeah, so that's part of what I've been working on for the last while. Um, distracting myself. That's what I'm doing. I keep distracting myself. So on this, the code page, I want to add a new, um, a new story that's an editable one. So by default, we want code to always be uh, read only. But what I will do is I'm gonna go to uh, code slash stories slash config. So here we can see that config file I was talking about. And so this uh, JSON file, basically it's got a string that's a description of the component and it's got an alternative, an alternative which is the, the hook version, and it's able to de de determine 
by the fact that it's prepended with use, it's able to de de determine that the alternative is a hook and that this is a component and all that. So it's able to do all that magic without the config having all this minutia in there. And then a stories config that literally just says what it's called and what code to give it and what color scheme to default to. And so from this, these like three fields on a single JSON object, we're able to generate all of this and have that hooked up to other readmes. And, and it also means that now that I want to add a new story, I don't have to go to the stories file and remember how how to generate a new story and stuff. I can just add a new uh, set of props. So I'm going to say code um, editable. And I'm going to say uh, editable is probably a bad prop name. What's the opposite of read only? Writable? Opposite of read only. Writable. That's the first thing that came up. Read mint, writable. Yeah, I guess it's writable. I don't love that either though. I'm gonna say editable. True. So this is not gonna do anything. Um, it also doesn't hot reload because I need to run the script that generates these stories. But you can see in here, so I run yarn, uh, yarn readmes, which just tells yarn to run a TypeScript file that I've made called readmes that just loops through my local, uh, my local system looking for the folder structure and all files with that config struct config name and, uh, generate stories from them. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to do this off screen cause I'm never sure if if uh, terminal will like have my IP in it and stuff. So I'm going to keep that off screen for now. Okay, so yeah, I just, just ran it there and you can see it's like, um, I shall zoom in. So make it a bit more visible. Yeah, you can see it's, I've got some kind of dumb console logs in there, but yeah, it's saying like, these are the co components it found. These are the hooks it found. Didn't find any uh, utils because I don't have any storybook stuff set up for utils. But in theory, it could. It's it's in it's meant to be there in the table of contents, um, and it's this basically yeah explaining when it's generating the table of contents. These are the things that it knows about. So that's what is going on. But having executed that, um, my storybook page now has uh, it's covered up by chat, but it now has an editable story. So on the main page, we can scroll down and see there's a basic version and an editable version. Sweet. Uh, so from now on, now that the story is there, I can just try to edit the source code and make it editable and see if that's actually possible. I'll stick that over there. Uh, okay, so in theory, we can make it so that covering it up. In theory, we can make it so that without having to change the storybook stuff at all, that we'll be able to just click in here and type. I have no idea how nicely that'll play with, um, shit, with the highlight component because I just realized highlight, highlight JS, which I'm using to do this syntax highlighting, it like replaces the DOM elements. So if we have it as a text input, it will be replaced by a bunch of uh, HTML stuff with custom colors and, and stuff. So I don't know how we'll actually make it work with the text input. Let's just try it. Let's just see. So I'm going to add a prop in here called, what was it? Editable. Boolean. And it's going to be false by default, or rather undefined by default. Um, code props. So we just want to know, is this editable? I wonder... OK, 
can. Here's where I'm just going to show some just, you know, web development uh, inexperience again. Inexperience isn't the right word. I'm very experienced, but very naive or dumb. I don't know. What I want to know is, can you just make a pre-tag editable? Um, pre-tag editable? See, content editable isn't really what I want. Is it? Shit. Maybe it is. Because content editable, I feel like I've only ever seen it as like a dumb little debug thing. That you can make any page content editable and you can type on it and change the content. But that might actually be perfect for just making any element a text input. It's probably very bad in terms of accessibility. Um, but let's see what we do. Use HTML instead of text. So what are they doing here? Okay. So a guy is talking about just using content editable to do what I'm talking about and it's working for them. I think it's, oh, it's gonna cause a lot of, just kick my tripod. Yeah, um, content editable won't work with highlighted stuff. Will it? No, I think I'm gonna have to go, have like a toggle to go in and out of edit mode, I think. Yeah. Yes. I'm not sure. I don't know how that will work with the edit or with the code component. Basically, I'm thinking that if I can toggle on and off editable edit mode, then I don't have to worry about syntax highlighting because I can just, if we're in edit mode, then I just turn off syntax highlighting and have it be the plain text, the pre-tag. Like, I, this is one of those things, okay, it's definitely not gonna work, but I'm just gonna see uh, if I just make the pre-tag content editable. Content editable is uh, editable. So if I do this, I can click in here and I can change. That works. And I can click in here and type. That works. And it's still got the right syntax highlighting. because I'm extending existing words, such as it should not be adding this highlighting to the, I'm gonna zoom in so you can see this. This stuff should not still be purple, given that it no longer is a return call. It's interesting. And yeah, if I just type more shit here, it's keeping the same syntax highlighting because it, while it looks like it's all one, thing. This is like a bunch of HTML tags. Try to just quickly inspect this. Uh, yeah, so you can see, even though we're passing it in as just a string, it's just a single string being passed into this tag. After it gets syntax highlighted, HLJS breaks this into individual tags. So I'm able to edit this like if i type in here this html gets edited but the entire thing doesn't just the one tag and we can fix that we can fix that by re-highlighting every time the text changes which i feel like it won't work because, um, why don't I think that? Because I feel like it'll lose the, 
cursor position. I feel like if you type a character and then we do the highlighting, the DOM will change and suddenly your focus will go. So we might have to do some fuckiness around uh, holding on to your focus of like, okay, your focus is on the 14th character. So regardless of what happens after this, bring the focus back to the 14th character, that kind of stuff. Uh, it might just not work. It might just not work. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, I want to see, is there a way to tap into the content changing? Content editable detect change. So we can detect key down events. Uh, it wouldn't cover copying and pasting. Um, the input event. This does not say much more to the equivalent of the change event rather than the input event. So. Yeah, there's an input event that should hopefully cover it. Let's check. Um, what are we doing? Ref equals pre-ref. Make a ref to that. Or will I... We've already got code L. Update code L. We've already got this function running to detect if the code element changes. So I guess in here would be a good time to do it. This probably makes sense. So whenever this changes, if we've got the code element, I'm going to attach a listener to it. L dot, and then paste all this in. L dot add event to listener. Let's take this out of here. Um, and what do we call it? Const uh, unchange editable code. Uh, what are the arguments? No idea. I guess I'll just stick a debugger in and look at the arguments when it happens. So. I will only do this if editable is true. Um, and I'll also need to be able to remove this. Uh, so I, this has to be a use callback then, because I need to be able to remove this in a use effect. This is fine. So what I'm doing here is I'm setting up a use effect to remove the event listener that I'm attaching to this thing. No, that doesn't work. Uh, because if the element changes, we won't have removed the listener from the previous element. I guess we could just do it in here. Um, so, yes, if editable, I really need those coding tests to improve me. Um, I suppose this could all happen just up here, right? 
So if it's editable, then I'll check if we already have a code L dot current. Um, in which case, code L dot current dot remove event listener input and unchange editable code. So we really need this function to be a fixed reference because we need it to persist between adding adding one you know to the first render and then removing it from the second render and adding it to another thing they all need to be the same function reference that's why i'm using a use callback and why i need to make sure that it doesn't get any changeable dependencies i think hopefully we'll, we'll try to make it uh, work that way I suppose I could have that be a use ref. We'll see. We'll see when it comes. Unchange editable code. I, I don't really know what this false prop is. Out event listener. Third arg. It's a boolean value indicating whether or not to use capture. And does it also exist on remove? Okay. Removal of a capturing listener does not affect a non-capturing version of the same listener. So I guess I really want, I do really need to add this, uh, Third attribute in there. Good note. Okay, so we're removing that event listener here whenever we're adding a new one. And then also just going to do that in here. Uh, just stick that. Stick that there. What's it complaining about? Unchange editable code. Yep, I need to add that as a dependency, but that's fine because unchange editable code never changes. So far, anyway. We'll see. So we're adding, removing an, a listener if one exists, adding it to the new one. And this is all to test can we detect that the code has changed. So let's see, here's our editable one. Is is the console gonna break point us? No. Maybe I, maybe I need to refresh. Maybe I need to refresh. Um, just real quiet, sad music. Get some, yeah, let's get that going. Okay, so here's our editable guy. Nothing. We are not pausing, despite it being edited. I wonder if that's what the use capture thing is about. Because it's not... Oh, uh, no. So I guess... The input event might only happen to the actual element that gets the input change, and it might not propagate up. Uh, before I look too hard into that, I'm just going to check if this fixes that that mysterious third argument. No. Damn it. So like we can we can do a much easier version of this and just have a read-only version that's syntax highlighted and then have uh like a plain text one next to it or have that toggle between the two like i was talking about 
I think it'd just be so sick if you could if you could type any shit in here and it would do like a code editor and syntax highlight as you type. Uh, might have to abandon that though. Wonder. Oh, right. I had that wrong. But yeah, I wonder. Is there any way, or would it be too fucky to like add the listener to every descendant? Input event prop by uh, gate. So type input. Is there anything about propagation here? This event also applies to elements with content editable enabled and to any element where design mode is turned on. event target is the editing host. If these properties apply to multiple elements, the editing host is the nearest ancestor element whose parent isn't editable. Is that gibberish to anyone else? I feel like I'm reading a contract. input elements with type checkbox no no it's not, doesn't matter to us input element is fired event is fired every time the value of an element changes could I just apply it to every element? Screw it. I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna make a function that does it. Apply uh, listener to all descendants. Uh, fn void uh, l I guess I'll do L is HTML element let's see how we can if there's a handy way of doing this apply listener to all descendants I'm not seeing much about this other than maybe the this thing what was it query selector all I want to see can I do that does it have to be on the document element or can I do that on like a code tag so I'm gonna grab him uh, actually no this guy use in console so temp zero dot oh, what was it called Query selector all. Query selector all. Um, if I just give it an asterisk, 
just give it an asterisk. And that gives me all descendants. That works, I think. Uh, we might be duplicating a bunch of stuff. If there is inheritance within any of it. As in, like, if the events are propagating to the parents and we've attached a listener bo to both the parent and the child, we'll hear it twice, but it doesn't seem like these input events propagate. So, here we go. Uh, L dot... Was it query selector all? Asterisk. Dot... How do I convert that to an array? To... Array dot from? We good? We good. Array dot from... Dot add event. Oh, what am I doing? Dot for each. Uh, descendant. HTML element. It just shuffled like 50 songs and played the exact same song it was playing. What are the odds? Someone in chat tell me. It's probably very easy to work out. Uh, descendant dot add event listener fn. Uh, should probably make that variable, right? Uh, event name. Event name string. And I'll make the other thing optional, won't I? To copy there um, the existing API. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. So what are we doing? Uh, use capture, I think is what it was called. So that's optional. And that's... It's an optional boolean. So it's gonna go in there. It's gonna go in there. And I'm gonna make the exact same thing that just removes it. Listener to all descendants. Remove listener from all descendants. Uh, why does it not like this? Types of parameters descendant and value are incompatible. Type element is missing the following properties from type HTML element. So I can just call this that. Yeah. Sweet. And here we're going to remove the event listener. So this is all just a hacky little stab at. Uh, yeah, I, I, I got too distracted making that like a nice API, forgetting that this is just like a hacky little thing to see is this even possible. So, sorry, Rosie's texting. One moment. So I left it too late in the day uh, to start this stream, basically. So my plans of quickly doing some coding and then quickly doing some gaming has turned into an elongated coding session followed by needing to go to the shop to get ingredients for dinner. Also got a hair on my tongue. It's a cat hair. It's a cat hair. Trust me. So yeah, once I get somewhere with this coding, I think I need to run off. Uh, maybe I'll come back to stream to play a bit of games but I don't know if I've stopped maybe I'll leave it then we'll see I'm just gonna power through and try to get this working um, so I'm gonna get rid of this and replace it with uh, 
move event listener from all descendants. Code L dot current input on change editable code false. So copy that up here. And here I'll add it on. So it's currently only adding uh why was that not work? L. This has to just be L. Yeah, so currently these functions are only operating on the descendants of the component of the element passed in. I might need it to also happen on the root element itself, but we'll see. Am I misspelling the word descendants? My IDE is always complaining about words that I feel like I'm spelling correctly. I just got a stern look. Person walked into my room and was very mad at me not being willing to go to the shop real soon. So rapid fire, we're gonna get this working. So it's saved. So now any change is gonna to apply to every, every element in here is gonna have the listener attached to it. So hopefully something's going to debug her right now. No. No. Uh, I don't know why. Because these should... I should probably put a debugger in, um, in my code here just to figure out, is something actually happening? Ah, I, I, I'm removing. There we go. I have not actually added a listener at any point. I've just removed it three times. Okay, so now we're adding a listener. Now this time it'll work. I'm gonna turn off this uh, highlight when components update things. It's real eyesore. Let's see, let's see, is it editable? Okay, it's editable, but the question was, is it gonna break point? And it did not. God damn it. Okay, I'm just gonna stick a debugger in here and see is this code even firing? It is, okay. So we're adding a listener to all descendants, all descendants of L. Uh, Was it not able to find any descendants? Because I added a breakpoint in there. So, array dot, ah, just l dot query selector all. Is the problem that it hasn't syntax highlighted yet. I think that is the problem. Yeah. Because I'm putting this before highlight.js has run, it hasn't formatted it into individual elements. Fuck. Okay. Let's see if that fixes everything. Um, I'm just gonna say old L. The reason I put this up here was because we needed a reference to the old one that gets removed at this point. So I'm just gonna store a reference to it. Old L is this. I'm gonna let syntax highlighting happen. Then do this stuff to the old L and apply this to the new L. Cool. Um, and every time 
the highlighting happens. Every time the highlighting happens, we need to redo this. Yeah. So in here. So I'll just copy this same stuff over. So I'll make this. I suppose I'm not going to make this too fancy for now. Just right now, this is going to do that. Um, if code L dot current. There. Okay, so now anytime the code content changes, this will run and it'll highlight the thing. And then this will run and it'll uh, remove the old listeners and add new ones. I think maybe this reference is wrong at this point. I'm not sure. We'll just have to see. Uh, gotta get rid of that breakpoint. But it's hitting the breakpoint, which is good. That's progress. Um, type in here. So that's not what I want to see. I want it to goddamn breakpoint when I do that. Uh, a component is content editable and contains children, managed by React. It is now your responsibility to guarantee that none of these nodes are unexpectedly modified or duplicated. This is probably not intentional. It is intentional. How dare you? Um, so I guess, should I mark them as content editable as well? I'm going to do it. Um, shit, yeah, I need to check if it's editable as well. There's no reason doing this if it's not editable. If editable and code current. So in here, I'm going to make each one of these editable. Descendant. Descendant. That's why. No. Okay, so that's misspelled. Descendant is misspelled. But the this guy, I think my code editor is just wrong. Descendant dot set attribute content editable. True. Doesn't like it. Argument of type boolean is not assignable. Yeah. True. I feel like that's not going to change anything. But we'll see. Yeah. So the content is editable and in theory they all have input event listeners on them. But they ain't doing nothing. This should be firing. I'm just considering the possible that because this is all in an iframe, whatever, the breakpoint wasn't hitting. But we were hitting breakpoints in other places anyway, so that's... That was a dumb... That was a dumb... Yeah, I have no idea. If this input... Uh, input event listener, does it even work? Is that even a thing? Um, am I successfully making all of these elements content editable? That's the first thing to check. Content editable, true. Okay. And there's an event listener that's in theory bubbling. So I shouldn't even need that. I shouldn't even need to capture it at every element if bubbling is turned on. Just 
just while I'm here, before I forget, I am going to add this event listener and remove it from the original element as well. Just for funsies. Um... So that is just making sure... Did I copy the right line? No, I did not. There. The reason I'm adding the listener to the top level element is that there are some places where like if you're typing say in the middle of plain text it seems to not have syntax highlighting there it seems to just be part of the top level element so i want to capture changes there too so yeah so right there i am where, where is that typing even going is the question what i've just typed there is a direct child of the code element. It's content editable and it's got an event listener listening to input. And that event listener just is not working. Add event listener input not working. This is really frustrating to search for input event listener because that sounds like such a generic thing but i mean specifically uh like it is still documented here even though it, it was suggested in like a 10 year old answer Use the event name every time the value of the element changes. Value. So what I want to see is, is there a way to like, if I put, if I have a text input element and I put pre-formatted text in, can I do that? Okay. New pitch. New pitch. So what, what would it be? Text area. Hmm. Just out of interest, does Mantine allow custom components no no they don't text area and can a text area contain a pre tag let's see no because it's just calling to string on it can a pre tag contain a text area I don't think so. No. What if I get rid of this shit? If a pre tag contains a text area, what happens? Uh, that's just some bad JSX. Bear with me. Okay, so it can, and I can type. If 
feel like this doesn't work though because the text area its content its value still won't change that doesn't fix anything for us um, what if I default this to text area as being the code tag shit I really thought that would work Oh, because I was wrapping a text area in a text area. Okay, this one will work. Uh, <laughs> almost worked. It's given it a black background. But what the shit has happened? We've got a pre-tag with a text area. And then... Oh, God. So it... Highlight JS has done its thing. Here. So it's turned it into a bunch of individual... tags. But they don't display correctly... within the text area. Now I'm considering... Overlaying the two, rendering both. And when you type, <laughs> invisible text area, invisible text area that when it updates, um, does the, does the thing. We good? I'll explain what I mean never. So in here, I'm gonna put text area, value, um, what are we calling this? Children. Unchange. And that will just be our uh, callback thing. What was it? On change editable code. And this, I'm gonna. Oh, bear with me here. This guy. How will I do this? Zero opacity? That might get rid of the cursor. But maybe it's what we need. Style, position, absolute, inset, zero. I'm going to make parent uh, relatively positioned. Can I not put a style prop? On a pre tag? JSX elements cannot have multiple attributes with the same name. Oh shit. Can you text me about it. Did you text me about it? I will be right back. Rosie needs me to reach something in a high place. And we're back. Told you it'd be quick. Okay, so I've, I've got high hopes for this. I don't know about you. I don't know about any of you watching. Uh, 
So what was going wrong there is that I already had a style prop that I was just passing through from the parent. So what I need to do now is I'm overriding, or I'm extending that style with a custom position relative thing. Um, and I'm only gonna do this when this is editable. Editable and... Okay. <laughs> Why... I told it in set zero. Why did that not work? In set zero. It's getting with that. What if I just say with 100%? Height 100%. Okay. Okay. So this may be real fucky because I might need to like pixel push to get this to completely match um, the syntax highlighted one, but this could, this could work. Okay, so like we've got a cursor showing there. If I make this opacity zero, my question is, does the cursor belong to this, in which case the cursor is invisible, or is the cursor, like, always going to be there? Opacity is zero. Yeah, the cursor is invisible as well. Okay. Didn't expect that. Um, background color transparent. We got progress. So it's got, it's keeping the right bond and everything. So that's good. I think I just, I guess I need to just update this inset. Um, let's see. Under. I need to make this not resizable, right? Sizable. Resize. Okay. So I'm going to make this resize none. Is it a style? It's a style. Yeah. Done. Okay. Style uh, resize. What are my options? None. So this needs to be width 100%. Height 100%. Uh, background color transparent. Okay, so that's everything we've got in the browser. So that gets us here. It'd be nice if... Yeah, I just need to figure out how, how to fudge this over so that it lines up. Because basically, I, I need to see how much this is inset by. So the code has a padding of 1 EM. Is that a thing that HLJS always does? Or is that a theme specific setting? Because that could be problematic if it's theme specific. Um, where do I find that? Is it under hooks? Um, or is it syntax highlighting themes? Padding 1EM, shite. So I need to load this in somehow. For the time being, I'm gonna hard code it. Yeah, I'm gonna hard code it. Adding one EM to do derive 
this automatically. It's theme specific. Oh, why is that still wrong? So scroll is going to be a problem. Is it? Is it? We need it to always retain the same scroll level as the other sibling. I'm not going to worry about it for now. For now, the elements will just always be the full size. Yeah, fine. Except for horizontal scroll will be real fucky. Um, but I just need to disable this box. Thing. Um, was it outline? None. Order. None. Okay. So now, other than like being a couple pixels wrong, I can click anywhere and I am selecting the appropriate section of the highlighted code. This is so untested. <laughs> I really need to make sure that this actually just works. Uh, so I'll do that now. Border none. That's what I need to copy over. Border none. Okay. And uh, actually, text color. No, it's just color. Color uh, white. So if I make it white, then the cursor is going to be white. Cool. Yeah, so I'm going to derive that from the current theme. Because I want the cursor to look nice, you know? Shit, how do I make the cursor look nice? But still have the text be invisible. It might not be possible. I'm not going to worry about the cursor. The text is invisible. Fuck it. Transparent. Okay, yeah, so we don't have the cursor, but we can type. And if I type, code editor changes. So I can call back to say that the content has changed. change. So this is going to be optional. Um, it's a bit of a fucky API if the thing can be editable but doesn't have like an internal state, like a dirty state. That like basically I, if it's editable it becomes controlled. So I should probably take note of that. Um, new string new value string turn void um, only called when editable is true no local state used relies on being fully controlled Okay, and I was going to make a note that if it's editable, then it's also fully controlled, but that's always the case. If it's not editable, then it's also fully controlled, because if it's not editable, then it doesn't have any local state anyway, because it can't be changed. So on change is called then to make the code element update itself. Cool. Um, and is there a code demo component there's a code demo component sweet um. <sighs> mm. 
I'm trying to think, do I refactor the story? Or just gotta shut a window. Do I refactor the story to allow a wrapper that makes it controlled? Or do I add local state? Fuck it, I'm gonna add local state. Okay. And the reason for local state is that in Storybook, to be able to show that it's editable, I would need to add a wrapper that persists it somewhere. But adding a wrapper um, makes the demo less clean. So I, I'm just going to make the component able to persist local state and also call back when it updates. And const uh, dirty code content. Dirty code content. Set dirty code content. So, haven't done this in a while actually. It's kind of duplicating state, or duplicating props into state, um, which means that I need to definitely add a use effect such that um, if the code content updates, that we update our dirty state. And I guess any time this might be a better way to do the callback. So in here, whenever dirty code content changes, dirty code content changes, um, we want to not do this on the first render. content. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use an updating ref. Const uh, code content ref. Let's use updating ref code content. Because I need to be able to compare so that we don't call this setter on the first ref or on the first render. If code content ref dot current does not equal code, no. I need to put move this down here, sorry. Whenever code content ref dot current does not equal dirty code content, then we call on change with dirty code content. Change cannot be called with an object that's possibly undefined. Why would it be undefined? On change is possibly undefined. Gotcha. If on change, and that, I'm going to stick that in. Um. I don't want to add that as a dependency because I think someone might fair enough put it as a, like an arrow function and I don't think it's the kind of thing that we really want to be listening for changes to it because what we care about is a change to the content not a change to the handler um, so I'm going to say on change ref change ref dot current const on change ref equals use updating ref of on change um oh well I put a comma here instead of an and silly code content ref is also needed code content ref cool okay 
So just a little comment explaining what this is because I'm already confused. If we have an unchange callback and our dirty state differs from prompt, call the callback. And this one is um, when when props value changes, update our local state. Okay. So I don't need the on change call. I didn't have it here anyway. That's fine. So in here, this is oh shit. Is this, are, are we still broken here? Sweet. Arguments. I just want to see what arguments we get from this. So it's... Uh, arguments zero. Hopefully it's an event object. Arguments zero. Uh, dot value. No. Dot target. Ah, uh, target dot value. Okay. So E, and I'll say uh, set dirty con code content to E dot target dot value. And event. Keyboard event. Screw it. What what is called here? Um, what is this return type? It is a change event handler of HTML text area element. Change event handler. I say change event. Change event. Be good. Doesn't like it. Current target. Target. I want to look at these values. I'm being hurried. So it's of type element by default. And target. It's an interface that has no details. I don't know how to read this. I'm just going to TS ignore it. Uh, and add a to do. Fix this. Yeah, so I don't think I need any of this anymore because I'm no longer listening for changes to that stuff. Update code L. Is the music still playing? It's just really quiet. Yeah. Um, and we don't need to make it content editable anymore. Get rid of that. Commenting out JSX is always weird. Yeah, yeah. This makes sense. This makes sense to me. So we update string. And so we we want to change everything to no longer use code content for the highlighting, but to rather update to use dirty code content. Uh, there. I think. Text area value be dirty code content. And code tag will be dirty code content, right? Yeah. So I think this might just work. 
Let's see. Fresh, refreshing, nice, refreshing drink. Okay. Did I not make it invisible? I did not. Uh, color transparent. Like, it'd be better just to make the whole thing opacity zero. And I probably will eventually. But for now, I want to figure out the cursor. Cursor situation. Okay. If I type here, it extends that. If I get rid of this. Holy shit. It's updating the syntax highlighting as I type. And so uh, my cursor's there. Const my thing equals an arrow function. Holy shit. Uh, I have no idea where my cursor is though. It's in here. Um, fucking sweet. Const Connor is happy equals true. I don't know why I made that a string. Connor is happy equals true. We need to figure out the cursor situation, but this is great. And uh, as a test, let's see if I... I'm just going to grab some code. Just grab some random code. Grab all of that. Select all. Paste. So pasting works too. And, oh, what about this? And I just backspace. So that would have been the. What was it? Would it have been. What am I selecting here? I should make user select none on the code. User select. Nope. Um, style. Equals user select. Is user select not a prop? What am I doing? User select none. Yeah, it's a style. Okay. So under here, I'm going to override style. Um, copy in code props dot style. If it exists. And yeah, so user select none. Why does it not like user select? This just doesn't know what it is. Um, so I'll only do this if it's editable. Because if it's editable, then there's the other thing that can be selected. But if it's not editable, we still want the original one to be selectable. I think that makes sense. Editable, none. Uh, undefined. Yeah, the cursor thing's gonna be real interesting to think about. How do we dummy that? So as a test, I can syntax highlight this, but I can't edit it. This, I can syntax highlight. Okay, so I can see it's, the highlighting is going weird because what I'm highlighting is the invisible characters. This is interesting. I don't know if you can see that on, on the feed. Basically the, the select, the text area is um, is like one or two pixels lower than the syntax highlighted stuff. Um, I want to quickly see how do I get rid of this outline. Or is that, that's an accessibility thing, I guess. So yeah gonna have to figure out how to make that work nicely but 
Oh, that's so nice. And I can copy this. Paste it. Oh, no. So copying didn't work. Copy. Oh, shit. Okay, so that's the storybook being weird. As you can see, it's like overriding control C. Uh, what if I do that? No. So like if I just grab this, kind of paste this in. Yeah. I can go to the end of the line. Nope. How does that work? I have no fucking clue what's going on. Okay, for some reason clicking here. Oh no, everything's offset. What's going on? How did that happen? Why is the text area not matching the code? Let's see, let's bring up the opacity again. Color transparent. It was just scroll. The scroll is fucking me. Okay, because yeah, if, if we scroll one of them, the other scrolls. So what I'm gonna do, set overflow hidden. Overflow, hidden, so that should disable scrolling, for this guy at least. Oh. So let's see how it works when the other thing can scroll. Doesn't have horizontal scrolling built in. Okay. That's fine. That makes sense. And it all is wrapping to the size of the box. This is fine. I think this works. We're gonna have to figure out how horizontal scrolling will work, but maybe that can be on the wrapping pre-tag. Yeah, I think that makes sense. So the code tag will be overflow hidden. They can both be visible. How about that? Overflow visible. And this will be overflow visible. Um, and then this will be overflow auto. Which I think should mean that the two siblings will always be their full height and it's up to the wrapping box the wrapping pre-tag to control the scroll position so we don't need to worry about keeping them in sync sweet we really just need to figure out this cursor situation keep text transparent but keep cursor Style the text not touching the card using the text fill color of WebKit. Interesting. Is this a thing? Is this a thing that I can use? Let's see. Text area. Oh. Color. So if I make this color white. Sick. Yes, that's so good. Okay, and I'll derive whether it's white or black from the color scheme. So get rid of that. 
so you are making the text transparent. Doesn't like this. What if I capitalize it? I'll do that. Doesn't like it. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna. Uh, is that TypeScript or. Yes, then. Okay, it's going to yes, ignore it. Ignore. And here, I'll check color scheme. So where was that we pulled it in? It's from here. Come on. Oh, shit. Um. I grabbed that from. Yeah, shit. So the color scheme doesn't even exist in the library. Was it? No, there's no concept of color scheme. Style, code props, editable. Surely there is. No, there, there is. Sorry, I made a lot of noise there. I'm playing with the thing at my feet. Um. Because I'm the code the code component has color scheme in it. Syntax highlighting options. Color scheme. And is that being passed in anywhere? Um, syntax. Computer color scheme is going to be syntax highlighting options. Right, okay, so it, it does have the color scheme prop. It's just inheriting it from the other place. So, I'm just going to grab that from here. Color scheme equals that. So color is going to be, if color scheme equals dark, then we want color to be white, otherwise black. Refresh the page. Ooh. Okay, the white cursor. Sick. Um, can I... This is going to affect that. What oh, does? What? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, I'm in a lot of trouble, guys. Um, I don't know if anyone's actually watching, but yeah, basically, I'm in a lot of trouble with my girlfriend because I keep streaming and coding when I need to be going to the shop. So I'm I'm gonna end the stream early. Unfortunately, there's no Elden Ring. Uh, if anyone's actually watching. Um, I'd really appreciate if I if someone would following if someone would follow me because I uh, have a follower goal and I have desperate need to um, not have a single stream where I don't get a single follower. So if you're following or if you're not following and you're watching this, uh, it would really make my day and make me not very sad if uh, if you followed. Um, I'll, I'll just uh, yeah, you've got you've got ten seconds. You got ten seconds while I uh, go be sad and in trouble. Maybe longer. It's taken me a long time to fish my USB dongle out of my keyboard. <sighs> oh, it's supposed to be a one-hour stream. I stream for two hours, and I didn't even play any games, and I got nowhere near completing the goal. Whoops. There we go.